Hey viewers, my name's Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays here on The Pagan Perspective. And this week I'm trying out the camera on my new phone for recording. It looks pretty good so far. And there's a pretty cool feature on this phone. It's the Galaxy S9. This is not sponsored. I wish it were. Um, but no, my mom got me this phone because she got a deal getting us both the same phone. It's the first time we've ever had the newest one. It has a pretty cool feature where I can do a split screen. So I actually have the topic text up on half of my home screen over here for me. And I have the camera recording on the other section. So yeah. This week's topic comes from Kayla, who asks us essentially about negativity. Yeah, I think that's a good way to kind of bring both of these topics together. So part one of Kayla's topic says, and this will be in the description of the video as always, Part one says, I understand that not all pagans are magical practitioners, but for those who do practice, how do you deal with or educate those who believe magic to be evil or negative? And then they go on to share a story that they had a former employer who claimed to be friends with a witch when she was younger and went on about how for a long time she didn't see the harm in it until later she realized that it caused evil and negativity not only to her but to her friend as well. She is now and has been a Christian ever since then. And then the second part of their question is talking more about negativity, asking specifically how do we choose to protect ourselves against or prevent negative entities, whether that be in our magical practices or if we happen to enjoy paranormal investigating, which they and their friend enjoy doing. Uh, when they talk about it in paranormal TV shows, they tend to lean more toward Christian beliefs and prayer. So I think negativity is what these topics have in common. I'll start with part one. Not all pagans are magical practitioners. That's true. I would say that not all pagans, for sure, identify as people who do magic or spellcraft, certainly, um, but there is an element that I consider magic within what some other paths do within the course of their ritual work. So they might not do separate spells, folk magic, and things like that that witches might do or people who consider themselves practitioners of magic might do. They might not have all these different practices, but paths who incorporate ritual into their practice, I consider magic to be part of all of those things. But you're right, Kayla, in saying that not everyone identifies as a magic practitioner, not everyone considers themselves to do magic. So for those who practice, I am someone who practices magic, how do we deal with or educate those who believe it to be evil or negative? Well, I think that's largely what I've been doing on YouTube for almost a decade now. So to make it simple, I guess, when it comes up like in person, when people ask me about this kind of thing, I like to explain it in ways that I've explained it on YouTube many, many times before. So I apologize if you guys have heard me I'm like a broken record, right? Um, I like to explain magic as being a tool that can be used for good or bad. And it's really up to the intent of the practitioner. It's up to the person using it, whether or not they're using it for good or bad, whatever you consider those words to mean. But magic itself is not inherently negative, is not inherently evil, if that's a word that people use. I don't even necessarily like to use that word. And so my favorite example, and this is not something I came up with, this is something that people say. The, my favorite example that I always give people is like a hammer, right? A hammer is a tool that you can use to build a house or you can use it to bash someone's skull in. It's the same tool, but it, intend, it depends on the intent of the person wielding that tool, whether they're gonna use it to build something great or to destroy something. And not all destruction is necessarily bad. Now, bashing someone's skull in, I am not condoning that, okay? But 
Destruction in itself is not inherently evil or negative, as some people would think it is. It's part of the rebirth process, right? It's creation and destruction are necessary things. That might be something that's a little bit too much to get into with people who think that magic is evil. Uh, I can say that to you guys, but I don't usually get into that conversation with people who just ask me about this. Some of them, though. You can pretty much tell when people are... You know, they're going to understand the logic of what you're saying when you explain it that way. And you can be able to talk about, like, you know, all of the elements have positive and negative qualities. You know, you might like a nice, warm, cozy campfire. Then that's a positive way of looking at fire. But fire also has destructive properties, as does everything. Magic is the same. Magic can be used for good or evil. Good or evil. <laughs> Again, not really ways that I personally describe them. As a, far as the next part, people who say, oh, I used, to, I used to know a witch when I was younger and I thought it was fine, but then it was revealed to me that it's evil and negative. This is a really hard thing because everyone's experience is different. And I've also heard from people, you know, in comments on the internet who talk about how they used to do witchcraft when they were younger and they realized that it was just you know, it was a very negative thing for them. They were coming from a very dark place. They got into it for the wrong reasons. Essentially, that's what it comes down to is like, some people get into it for the wrong reasons. Some people think that magic is a way to gain power over other people. They think that it's a way to gain revenge. They think that it's a way to be cool, you know, whatever. And so if someone were talking to me about that, I would ask, okay, how much younger were you when you knew this person? How young were you? Because while there are young practitioners who are absolutely sincere in their beliefs and desire to walk this path, there are also young people who get into it for the quote-unquote wrong reasons and who do find out later that what they were doing is not what the rest of us are doing or is not really what the religious aspect is for, or it's something that's not really possible by magic, because again, they're coming at it with these ideas that it's like the movies, it's like books, you know. So it's very difficult. I don't mean to say that, oh, if you're young, that automatically means that you didn't know what you were talking about. I started when I was very young. So did so many people on YouTube who are incredibly knowledgeable about this kind of thing. But there are also a lot of us who started our path when we were very young and we had some friends who were into the same things but then a few years later we're the only person who was still genuinely interested in it because the other people were interested in it for the wrong reasons and found out that they weren't going to get out of it what they thought they were so they gave up you know so for some people it is a phase that they're doing to be cool or they're doing because they want to get back at someone or whatever, you know. But then for others, that's not the case. So I would ask this person, you know, what were your reasons for getting into the craft when you did? How much did you know about it? What are the sources? Because again, you don't want to negate someone's personal experience. These people obviously have had experiences that are their own. And some people have had really negative experiences getting into or getting introduced to the craft by people who were in it for the wrong reasons, and so therefore they're introduced to it with negative perceptions. And there are people who identify as practitioners of the craft, who identify as pagan, witches, whatever, who are not great people. And yes, there are people who use magic for negative intent, who are out to harm people, and they have to deal with that on their own, you know? So, yes, I know of people who were introduced to the craft through those kinds of people who were trying to gain power over people instead of recognizing their own power from within and, you know, all of these things, right? So when something like that comes up for me, I try to be sensitive to the fact that these are personal experiences that people have had and I just try to give a different example of, you know, a different personal experience and the experience of many other people. And I am, I am actually sorry that people get introduced to these things with negative 
environments around them, I guess you would say. I am truly sorry that people have such negative experiences. And so maybe then another religious path or another spiritual path is better for them because the experience that they had within the craft or within paganism was so bad. And you have to honor that that is their personal experience. And they should be willing to see that that is not everyone's experience and that is not the universal experience. So, yeah. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but that's pretty much how I think of it. Part two, how do you choose to protect yourself against or prevent negative entities? We have talked about this recently on The Pagan Perspective, things related to this. We've talked about how we handle um, pesky piskies and things like that. Eric, actually, who was a former member of Pagan Perspective, asked us to talk about that. So we've talked about this kind of thing recently. You can find other videos on it, but... Anyway, for me, okay, I was sitting there thinking about this and really I have to be honest and say that the most negative entities that I have ever come across in my entire life, let alone in my practice, have been other individual human beings, you know? So in my practice, in my life, and in my experience, I'm not usually so much worried about protecting myself from negative entities such as spirits or any other things like that and I have been a paranormal investigator for years I have been that makes it sound like it's really ongoing I haven't really done it seriously in a number of years but when I was younger when I was in high school and still living with my mom my mother and I my brother a lot of our friends some of whom were witches as well uh, we had a paranormal investigation group that we would go out and do investigations regularly. We would go to people's homes. We would just, you know, go to different places. We would put on demonstrations at different events, showing people the kinds of equipment that we use, how it's done, stuff like that. So thinking about this was very nostalgic for me, like thinking about those times that we used to go out and do that together. But um, yeah, even even at that point, I was never as concerned with protecting myself from negative energy as I am with protecting myself from negative people. And so I know that that is also a personal experience, right? So when we were paranormal investigating, uh, I would protect myself just in case, you know, you never know, by making sure that I had eaten and that I was grounded and centered. Sometimes I carried crystals on me. I also practiced shielding. So creating a shield of energy around myself that will only let in the types of energy and experiences that I want. Um, but of course, with paranormal investigation, you want it to be, you want to be able to sense certain things that you can't normally sense. So it couldn't be so much of a shield like a suit of armor that I wouldn't feel anything a little bit different that was in the air, so to speak. But yeah, I only really had one experience where I was really knocked off center by a spiritual energy of or, or an energy of some kind that we experienced while investigating. Um, so I was typically one of the people who if I walked into a room and I was hit by a wave of energy then everybody else was able to know what was going on. Um, yeah so there was really only one time so after that I started to make sure that I eat so that my physical being is grounded because if you've got stuff like that going on and you haven't eaten and you're sleep deprived, like for me, that's just, that's trouble waiting to happen. So I made sure that my physical self was taken care of so that I could concentrate on that other kind of thing and sensing that. Um, but yeah, as far as keeping myself protected from negative people, um, the easiest way that I've been going about doing that, especially in the past few years, is when someone is revealed to me to be a harmful energy in my life or what I sometimes refer to as a toxic energy or toxic influence in my life, I cut them out of my life. It's really easy. I don't let them influence me anymore. When it's not so easy, when it's someone that you have to be around or a situation that you have to kind of be in right now because the way that your life is going, you can't fully step away from that. I do use crystals. I, again, use shielding. Um... I might use affirmations or little prayers that I've written myself, just little reassuring things. 
I do personally really like the imagery and the feeling of being inside sacred space or casting a protective circle. So I don't necessarily cast a circle around myself, but I do that same kind of thing with shielding that I just feel as though like, okay, I'm safe and protected from anything that I don't want to let in, right? And so it allows in anything that I am willing to have in. And that allows you to maybe go a little bit outside your comfort zone a little at a time right so you can push that boundary a little bit but still maintain safety as far as crystals smoky quartz is one of my favorites for removing negative energy from a situation or from my body clear quartz is always great for pff, everything and labradorite is something that i started wearing and i just started wearing my little labradorite skull necklace again this week actually because I misplaced the moon my crescent moon necklace that I've been wearing every day I misplaced it somehow I don't know where it is so I started wearing my skull again let me show you this guy flashy labradorite anything that is iridescent and has that really flashy like reflective quality is really good for metaphysically speaking magically speaking for reflecting things back away from you right so when I was dealing with a really negative, toxic person in my life a few years ago who I didn't really have the option of just cutting out of my life at the time or getting away from at the time, I looked up and like, what crystals are good for keeping negative people away from you, right? Or like, you know, shielding yourself a little bit more from that kind of energy so that it doesn't harm you as much if you have to be around it. And one of the things recommended was Labradorite. And I happen to have a few pieces of Labradorite as well as now I have this necklace. So at the time, I would take a Labradorite that one of my friends who I used to work with actually got me. She went somewhere, I forget. And she brought back a Labradorite for me. And I would wear it, I would keep it in my bra next to my heart. So for me, it was a heart chakra thing that like that's where I feel a lot of things the most. And I've discovered that for myself through my own work. For you, it might be your solar plexus, your core. For you, it might be your third eye, whatever. So for me, I feel a lot in my core and in my heart areas. So I would wear a Labradorite in my bra over my left side near my heart. And that was a way that I would protect myself from negative energy that I might be encountering during the day, whether it was from another human being or from spirits that I've, yeah, I've lived and worked in places that definitely have some spirit activity going on. Never really thought that they were negative in any way. They just happened to be there, you know? Spirit doesn't automatically mean negative. Um, but yeah, so those are some of the things that I have done. And it's really preventative because other than with human beings, I've not yet, knock on wood, not yet actually experienced anything super negative with energies. And that might be because I play it safe. And it might be because I protect myself well. I don't know. But whatever it is, I'm grateful for it. So, yeah. I hope that helps, Kayla. And I hope that helps the rest of you or gives you something else to think about. Next week is subs week on the collab. And the subs will be touching on something related to negative energy as well. So we kind of have a little theme going on here from week to week. I will see you next month. Until then, don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.